The Blue Jewel. Chapter 3. Part 6. In the middle of this discussion the door opened and Ordoni came in who seemed to suffer from a good hangover and then Arian with a serious countenance. Agnorak closed the door quickly and stood in front of it, preventing any exit with his body. Gosberg approved the half-orc's action. The young woman had a hard time waking Ordoni, who was sleeping on the kitchen table. The young woman told him a story about the window being broken and the innkeeper agreed to go upstairs, probably because he was still asleep. When he entered and saw Gosberg lying on the bed Ordoni turned pale. Good morning Master Ordoni. Gosberg smiled broadly. Ordoni tried to escape but as Agnorak was blocking the door, she tried to regain her composure, Arian was surprised, she didn't understand anything. Good morning. Lord Gosberg. I see you're glad to see me. By the way you were very sharp when it came to organizing the card game, I had to do a lot more cheating than my rivals to win. Lord Gosberg, we hadn't seen each other for years. By the way, how do I end the game? Agnorak thought that Gosberg knew too many places, too many people, it seemed that he had lived a thousand years. I have to inform you that your three good clients have suffered a fatal accident, and the death of one of them is a great setback to my business. The three dead. Ordoni was much paler. Of course it was somewhat excessive, but someone insisted on putting unicorn oil in my drinks and probably also in those of my partner. Agnorak got angry, unicorn oil, that explained the bottling of his head and the great drowsiness with only two beers he was drugged by Ordoni. To know how many customers who play cards he does this to so that they bet all their gold and lose against their cronies. Of course you Ordoni are completely innocent. Ordoni panicked, tried again to leave but Agnorak prevented him and with a push the innkeeper returned to stand in front of the Denka. Lord Gosberg, they forced me, they knew of their fame when playing cards and wanted some advantage, I tried to warn them but I was threatened by those bandits. Ordoni, you lie very badly, you are the ringleader of this conspiracy. But let's get practical. Yes, whatever the Lord commands. The innkeeper accompanied such docile words with a longbow, this astonished the two young men. First, as I understand the three bodies are still in the alley, I want them to disappear for at least a week. But the doctor is well known, people will ask for him. Say that he went south, his services were claimed by a great king who has offered him an enormous amount of gold. Whatever you order will be done. That's how I like it, without question. After that I want you to buy a mule and provisions for a week's travel. Yes, sir. You make me happy the morning or don't I have to come more times to your place. Wait there are more things. Ordoni had begun to back away from the room but was paralyzed by Gosberg's words. Do not leave, I need your services for one more thing, I want to use the shadow passage to leave the city without being seen. But I can't get that my lord. The smugglers guild will not consent to it. That Ordoni attitude is unproductive and disappoints me. Gold is no problem. Ordoni was very upset while the Denka was quietly lying on the bed. But. I don't want excuses, I want to leave as soon as night falls, so you have a lot of work to do. Lord Gosberg what you ask of me is impossible. What is impossible is that you live tomorrow if you do not do what I have asked you to do. Take this bag of gold for expenses, don't let me down. Gosberg threw him a leather bag that Ordoni picked up fearfully, Agnorak moved away leaving the door free, the innkeeper seeing his free escape quickly disappeared. Now the three of them were alone again and Gosberg covered himself with a blanket, he seemed willing to get some sleep. Arian was stunned by what she had just seen. All fixed, compliant. Yes, everything fixed. Arian blurted out the phrase sarcastically but Gosberg didn't seem to be affected and settled his pillow. 
It's crazy. How can you trust someone who has poisoned our drink? The half-orc also doubted the plan of the Denka. Relax, rest, it will not betray us. How are you so sure? Gosberg uttered a lament, the doubts of his two companions prevented him from resting, he looked at both of them reluctantly. Trust me, I am as interested as you are in leaving this city. He can betray us. Arian insisted. It has some conditions that will make it very loyal to us. Which? Insisted the young woman again. Through the window a mosquito entered. At this time of the morning they were looking for some shade to escape the sun and incidentally find some victim. Gosberg opened his eyes for a moment, his huge pupils dilated and then closed. With one finger he pointed at the mosquito, the two young men noticed his flight until it landed on a wall. Lightning, that was, Arian had never seen anything like it and neither had Agnorak who was an expert warrior. Arian shouted in amazement. At the second was a dagger stuck in the wall. The two young men approached. The mosquito was split in half. The two looked at each other incredulously, the half-orc with some difficulty removed the dagger from the wall, and both examined it. It was very small, it did not reach ten centimeters, but very sharp, matte black iron, weighed about five grams, you had to have an extraordinary strength to launch it at that speed, it was impossible, it looked like magic. The two turned their heads, Gosberg snored placidly on the bed, and the two looked at each other's eyes and wondered who the asterisk 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 was the little Denka. Immediately Ordoni and his men cleaned the alley with haste, inside a cart full of manure they hid the corpses, both Arian and Agnorak observed the whole maneuver thanks to the window of the room, they also saw how Ordoni and his men stole everything they could from the belongings of the three dead. The two young men and Karma decided to rest a little the trip would be long.